And finally, new rules. Someone needs to tell those wackadoodle militiamen who took over a federal building in the middle of nowhere in Oregon that to be a hero, you need something to be heroic about. These guys keep promising to occupy that building until, well, we're not sure. <laughs> and they're not sure. Something about redneck lives matter. <laughs> Just listen here to one of them, Patriot John Ritzheimer, explaining to his kids in a video he posted from his truck why he had to leave. It's going to be one of the tougher videos I've had to make. Your daddy swore an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. And that's why he couldn't be with you on Christmas. Wow, seems like a lot of trouble to go to just to get out of spending time with your family over the holidays. <laughs> Why not just drink like the rest of us? <laughs> now, of course, I'm probably being too cynical about this whole thing. After all, you can't doubt the passion in that video when he tells his kids, Daddy swore an oath, and that's why I can't be home. Except, John, you can be home. How? Get out of your truck and go back inside. <laughs> And not to be cruel, but how tough can you rugged individualists be when the first thing you did after storming the rest stop was to post an appeal online for supplies, a shopping list, really, that included such items as throw rugs, shampoo, foot warmers, and French vanilla coffee creamer. <laughs> what, no scrunchies so you can braid each other's hair? <laughs> And I don't know if you know this, but if you're such ready-to-die patriots, America has actual wars available. <laughs> yeah. You can go fight ISIS, because what you're doing isn't saving the Republic. It's more like when you're a kid and you run away from home by hiding in the backyard. <laughs> However, I must tell you that the right wing by no means possesses a monopoly on infantile drama queens. Does anybody remember the video last fall when a Yale college student confronted a professor because the professor's wife had written an email suggesting that maybe Yale should chill out a little bit on being the Halloween costume police? Well, here's that student's calm reaction. Because what I have the a fuck hired you? I have a different vision. You should step down. If that is what you think about being a professor, you should step down. It is not about creating an intellectual space. It is not. Do you understand that? It's about creating a home here. Again, you can't deny the passion. She is adamant that untouchables must be allowed to vote. Oh, wait, that's Gandhi. <laughs> right, this insufferable brat can't sleep at night because there's no school policy against the white girl dressing up as Pocahontas. <laughs> <laughs> to which they agree. <laughs> which is what these days they call a microaggression. Which begs the question, if it is a microaggression, shouldn't it just make you micro-angry? <laughs> Do we... Do we have to go to DEFCON 1 for everything in this country? Where's the perspective anymore? Hey, kid, you want to protest outfits that oppress people? Why don't you start with these? Because saying Yale doesn't have enough cultural sensitivity is like saying Pier 1 doesn't have enough wicker. <laughs> And <laughs> it's interesting that this Yale student and this hammerhead in the woods think they're political opposites, but really they're the same person. Martyrs without a cause, whipping themselves up into a lather over issues that would better be addressed with Xanax. <laughs> Because if you don't feel coddled enough at Yale or free enough in Oregon, there's nothing political we can do for you. It's the government's job to protect a lot of things, but your feelings ain't one of them.